Hey, this is Dr. Tom Rogers coming to you on a Monday morning with the annual weekly dictations. I'm going to talk about something today that's really piqued my interest, and that's salt. I was recently reviewing some literature on the studies about salt and how it got linked to high blood pressure. And it turns out that, you know, I went over this last year, and it seems like we've been kind of misled about salt. It turns out that that little white crystal that's the demon, the villain, is not salt. Of course, it's sugar. And actually, salt is one of those things that you really need a lot of. It was, it was brought about that the government told you to decrease your salt intake based on some faulty studies with genetically engineered mice back in the 50s. And then it got reinforced in the 70s. And that's when we started restricting salt in your diet. Back when I worked in the hospital, we always used to put people on a 2 or 4 gram uh, daily dose of salt, in other words, pretty severe restriction of salt if they had any kind of heart disease or high blood pressure, especially congestive heart failure. Um, but it turns out that those studies were bogus. It's true that in a very minority group of people, maybe 20% of people, they're a little bit salt sensitive to their blood pressure. But even then, they've determined in further studies that... Um, as much as a 60% decrease in their salt intake resulted in just 2 millimeters of mercury reduction in their blood pressure, which is really negligible. Um, you know, back through history, salt was one of those things that was a prize thing. I mean, uh, countries fought wars over salt. Um, I'm pretty sure the Latin word uh, salary came from salt and so you know what you're not worth your salt is one thing that people would say um, salt of the earth I mean salt was a valued commodity back in in the olden days even in the Civil War salt for Virginia was was precious because it's where a lot of the salt for the the troops went so salt is a very valuable mineral the most important mineral. I mean, think about it. When I'm on the football field as a team doctor and people start cramping, it's because their salt levels are too low. They've sweated out the salt. The same thing happens in daily life. When you sweat out your salt or you don't eat enough salt, you start to have problems. Um, salt is the most important mineral or electrolyte that we have. Think about it. When you look at a blood test, you're looking at the sodium levels and Usually it's an average of about 140 millimoles per liter. That's 140. With potassium, it's about 4. With calcium, I think it's around 2. Um, so it's by far the most important electrolyte out there. So when you sweat and you're cramping, and it's not your potassium, it's your sodium. So they've done a lot of other studies, and they've shown that the less salt you eat, the worse your health is. As a matter of fact... The more sodium that you restrict, the more chances you have of dying from heart disease or heart failure. So instead of putting these people with heart failure on a salt-restricted diet, we should really be feeding them more salt. I mean, you need to play around with it uh, at your house. You know, I'm not big on table salt. I'm, I'm big on sea salt. And when you look into it further, um, some sea salts are kind of mislabeled. Um, my favorite is Redmond Real Salt. It's, it's uh, probably the purest organic uh, sea salt there is because in this, they don't take out any of the iodine. The iodine is in there. Some of your sea salts have iodide in them. What you need is really iodine, and uh, that has a lot of other beneficial uh, effects as we've talked about in the past with iodine. But uh, So there's a lot of things that... Um, They've kind of misled us. So I'd like to emphasize that salt is the most important mineral for you to consume. As a matter of fact, for most people, the more salt they consume, the less their blood pressure is. So what you're trying to do is keep your blood pressure low, not high. So you need to kind of find out where your salt intake is. Um, I mean, back in the wartime, 
even prisoners of war were given nine grams of salt a day. And the, our American soldiers, want they craved about 18 grams of it. Of course, they sweated a lot, too. But it turns out in the countries that tend to live the healthiest, they have the highest salt intake. Look at Japan. Look at France and South Korea. I mean, they consume way more salt than we do, and they live longer and healthier. So you need to kind of consider you know, the, which bad white crystal is it and it's really sugar is the bad white crystal salt is the good white crystal you need it because it maintains your blood volume so you can perfuse all your organs and keep your blood pressure uh, normal not too high so look at this you know a lot of times things are the exact opposite of that we've been preached I mean even now they're preaching for weight loss and cardiovascular disease They'll say, eat less fat and less salt, when actually we should be eating more good fats and probably more good salts. Try the Redmond, at least get a, an organic sea salt. Pink Himalayan's a good one. But look at salt in a little different light. And uh, I'll see you next week. Thank you.